actress, uh, Shannon Ezra. Most of you know Shannon um, <laughs> as Sandra Stain. That's that's literally if you Google uh, Shannon, you you will get the name uh, Sandra Stain. So we're discussing Sandra Stain as well as Shannon's uh, journey as an actress. Um, Shannon has just joined us, so we're just going to. And she's just requested to join our live. Please do send in and we're going to have a good time. Just waiting on Shannon to uh, join us. Hey. Hey, hey. How are you doing? I'm great. How are you? I am doing good. Thank you for agreeing to do this. I'm super excited. Uh, I'm so excited. Thank you. Actually, I feel a little nervous. <laughs> Tell me about it. Tell me about it. In the last two minutes, I've got stage right. <laughs> no, but I'm sure we're going to do great. We'll do definitely great. And I have questions that I've written down for you. Like I have a whole not notebook for you. It's so professional. <laughs> cool. So, so how have you been keeping? How have you been keeping with the lockdown day twenty? seven of the lockdown how have you been keeping you know what thankfully been doing really well i mean just really taking it a day at a time i think that there is you know the seesaw effect of like a day to day it's even like hour to hour it can sometimes be really intimidating mm. and overwhelming so i'm just trying to stay present in the moment i'm just trying to keep myself busy because idle mind is the devil's playground so I'm, uh, I'm, I'm keeping myself busy. I just, I, you know, and I'm just being really vigilant when I do have to go to the store. Um, like I'm one of those people. I carry like my own sanitizer, like spraying things. I'm like that. I'm like that. It's in the pocket, and then I'm every time I'm sanitizing in my hands. Yeah. Oh, by the time you get home, your hands they're so dry <laughs> from the sanitizer. I like douse myself in moisturizer. <laughs> um, but you know what? It's been it's been a it's it's been a very interesting, quiet self-reflective time as well and uh, I try not get too caught up in being overly positive because there's mm -hmm. so much uncertainty and I'd rather just I don't know I'd rather just anchor into how I'm how I'm feeling and yes. uh, just take minute by minute so yeah it's been good I mean I can't I could complain but we all have the same complaints absolutely no I totally totally agree with you um how about you? So I've been alright. I've been I've been okay. I've been working a lot. Um yeah. and just just like you, I don't I'm not overly positive, but I also understand that it could be worse. So yeah. I count my wins, my small wins when I'm feeling great, I'm happy about it. When I don't feel so great, I speak to friends about it. I just own every moment as it comes. As it comes, yeah, as it comes. Exactly. Yeah. That's pretty much what I've been doing myself as well. Yeah, that's the way. That's the way. Cool. And, okay, so you know what? I'm looking at you, right? And literally all I'm thinking of is Candace. But before we get to Candace... <laughs> Yay, finally! Literally, that's all I'm... <laughs> so before we get to Candace, let's talk about Sandra Stain. Do you know when yeah. I googled Sandra, Sandra Stain, there's a Wikipedia about Sandra Stain. Literally. I'm kidding. I am Stop dead it. serious. I That's am dead so serious. You, you said Sandra that. Stain, and I promise you, there is. And I was just like, wow. How how do you? Okay, so let's start the character. When was the first time you played the character of Sandra? So the first time I played Sandra was on the Queen, and that was in mm -hmm. 2017. Um, I had received a phone call from Shauna Ferguson like late into 2016 and our conversations carried on for a couple of months. And he just said, look, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Harriet is going to go into a trial and we're going to need a, yeah. we're going to need representation for her. And they had often referred to Stain as the uh -huh. lawyer. They'd never been, they'd never really gotten into who he was and they uh -huh. decided that they didn't want um, him representing her, but instead they wanted his daughter, who was now going to be taking um, over for whatever reasons. So yes. I was really excited. I'd also had been working with Shauna on, you know, that year I'd been working with him on Isidingo. He played Tyson. Yes, too. Yes. So we developed yes, a 
wonderful working relationship. And I was just grateful that he thought of me for the part. And I remember he said to me, he said, you know, Gwydion, Gwydion and Pat have put together this character who um, she uh -huh. is um, Felicia, uh, Alicia Florick, uh, Olivia Pope, um, yes. you know, Violet Hair from How to Get Away with Murder wrapped into one, oh. had fun. And I was yes. like, thank you very much. I, I, I. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and so we saw Sandra representing Harriet Cosa. And you know what the thing is, is that she lost. She didn't win that uh -huh. case. I lost her. <laughs> Uh -huh. Jerry was never dead, but I mean, I didn't win, but there's so much like, so much talk about her that, I don't know, her, her reputation definitely precedes her. And, and I think it speaks a lot to you as an actress. I mean, the way you, you carried the character. So what was your preparation like? Because before I got on this, so I put on my WhatsApp story that I was going to go into interview you. And a friend of mine, Virginia, asked, Ask her if she will ever consider being an actual lawyer because you you portray the character well. So, what was the preparation process for Sandra? Uh, okay, so for Sandra, I I destroyed the Good Wife. I mean, I clapped that mm -hmm. entire mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. a, um, a scandal or the fixer as well. And yes, I've always yeah. I myself, I, you know, I always loved those legal programs. You know, David E. Kelly's. Ali McBeal and the practice. I yes. always loved that as a, as a youngster. Yes. Not like a youngster, I'm so old. Anyway, um, <laughs> well, I'd, I'd always enjoyed it and, and I've always enjoyed playing a lawyer. Like, I yeah. think when I was about eight years old, I thought to myself, oh, yeah, I could definitely be a lawyer. But oh. I cannot be a lawyer. I do not have the temperament to sit and study all those years. I oh, am yeah, not awesome. disciplined when it comes to studying. Like learning lines is sitting me down to learn lines is hard enough. So no, I will not. I will not be partaking in any LLB. <laughs> much to everyone's dismay, I uh -huh. I'm a good lawyer. I don't think I'd make a very good one. <laughs> I really don't. Okay, cool. So for everyone who's listening, Shannon is not a lawyer. Because some people say Sorry, you're God. a lawyer. I'm sorry to disappoint. Don't hate me. <laughs> but Mizu, you, you're playing her very well. So I also saw, I think there was an article uh, online that, that spoke about something that was very interesting, saying that people would love to see the Sandra Stain show. What are your thoughts? Oh I would love God. to see it. I would love, oh, I would just love to, I would, firstly, I would just, I'd love to know who she is outside of these very yes. intimate moments that we see her in. Um, I have my own little made up backstory just just for some character development and certain choices that I make in scenes mm -hmm. and in terms of, you know, when I, I think, uh, let me, because I, I, I'm, I'm a very sweet, nice person. I never want to hurt mm -hmm. people's feelings. I'm always very mindful of mm -hmm. how I impact other people. And I have to constantly remind myself that Sandra does not care. She doesn't care uh, for people. He's got uh, a job uh -huh. to do. And so I kind of, I myself have given her a little chip on her shoulder, like she's got to really mm. live up to her father for a couple mm -hmm. of reasons. So I would love to see where writers and producers would want to go with her because at this stage I'm, you know, I'm open. I'm, I'm happy to play. I'm, I'm just happy to play. Um, mm. I'd love, I mean, I'd love it. I think, I, think, I think legal procedurals, though, I think they can be very challenging. So mm -hmm. I think... It's it's about waiting for the right kind of um, creativity to get mm. there. Um, look, I, look, I don't know. I, I don't know anything about a spinoff in terms of any re the reality of it happening. But should I get a phone call and they say, "Are you in?" I'm like, "I'm, I'm already at your door." What are you talking about? I've been here with like a couple. Like, what are you talking? About? Uh, and, and and speaking of of being in lockdown, we we spoke uh, this weekend. Briefly, yes. that you were working on your own, you were writing your own show. T tell I me am. about that. So, yes. um, I've been developing a TV show for what now feels like forever. Um, it's been the last eighteen months have been a crucial time for myself and my writing partner Robert Hobbs. He's also he's a wonderful mm -hmm. actor. Um, and so that the last eighteen months have been really interesting. We're in a bit of a frustrating period right now because we can't sit with each other. So. We kind of have like work that we're doing separately. We're gone into like another storyline 
of, you know, we think we've got it and then we're like, no, we're missing it because we're dealing with quite mm -hmm. a, uh, we're dealing with, um, it'll be, it's going to be a psychological thriller. Okay. And mm -hmm. it deals mm -hmm. wow. with um, some heavy issues. I don't want to give too much away because I don't know what's going to okay. change, but, but essentially okay. it, it's, you know, mental health is something that I feel very strongly about. And so mm. there's, a, there's a very large element of that in there, but in a very different way. I mean, I think, mm. I hope it's different. We're trying to be creative and we're also trying to be true to the process of what it is that we're dealing with in terms of this particular mental illness or this mental disorder. So, I, you know, I spent the first three years just doing research on dissociative identity disorder. So, mm. yeah, it's... Um, it's 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 an enormous challenge and it's an enormous undertaking. But I think I think at the end of this, I think we're going to have something that we can really be proud of. And then we just need to find funding, you know, to make it. Yeah. I mean, that's the yeah. hard part. Like we can write to our hearts content, but if we don't have people who believe the in the right show, time, yeah. I'm um, also writing a screenplay again. You know, it's a screenplay that I've been mm -hmm. ignoring for the past three years, and then lockdown came and went. Hello. Allowed, yes. Hello. Oh. Look at me. Pay uh -huh. attention. Uh -huh. So, and that's a horror. Um, mm. I have committed to the whole aspect and genre of horror. I'm embracing it. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. I'm scaring myself stupid watching all types of horrors in the last few days. I only watch them during the day. I do not watch them during nighttime. <laughs> I will never sleep again. Uh -huh. um, so yeah, it's it's been it's been a re it's been a really good creative time but again that uh, the, the writer's the writer's block is also it is real so there are times when I just yeah. stare at my screen and I, I'm just like I hate this I'm terrible what am I doing why am I doing this and I'll get, go and paint something and then I get equally as frustrated because I'm like wow this is rough <laughs> 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 I'm just I'm balancing it really uh, and um uh, Renate, uh, Renate, uh, Struman is asking. Renate, yeah, the Renate is I have asking. not, and it's on my list. Oh, yes. ah, okay. Um, Real Black underscore Guru is asking, what did you study at varsity? I studied a, a BA in Dramatic Arts. Surprise. <laughs> uh, and this was at Wits, correct? Yes, I was at Wits. Yeah, I did my, my honours degree there and uh, finished in... I graduated in 2004, so I finished in the 2003. Okay. And I read somewhere that you're also a singer. I didn't know this about you. You're also a singer. Are you, I, have you released I anything? Sing. Are you, yeah. I enjoy singing, um, mostly in the shower, but <laughs> I can do a mean little karaoke if you get a little, uh, enough tequila in me. I, I won't shy. <laughs> oh, so you're not professionally. Think, no, I, I mean, the past, like, you know, uh, when I was when I was living in LA, I was um, I, I was working with a producer friend of mine, and we did a couple of tracks together. And I had a, a really good friend who we used to sit around the fire and tinker around with his guitar. I, I, you know, I'm a, I, I, I write, so I write. I used yeah. to write a lot of poetry, and I, you know, I, I've written a lot of songs, and so we would. She's so strong. Um, it's wonderful to see such a strong woman on screen. Um, so, you know, so dynamic. And then, and then it's also wonderful to play someone so vulnerable and so exposed. Mm. So, no, there's no favorite. Um, no, there's no, there's no favorite. It's like asking who's your favorite child. Ah, totally. I get you. So in terms of, so I'll go back to Candace. Um, what, what were some of your, favorite scenes or could you just pick out one scene where you say that was either very hard to play or favorite i'll tell you my favorite my yeah. favorite was when candace was about to drown herself she goes into the water there she is trying to drown herself then trish comes and she's throwing all those stones that That's was a powerful place. scene for me that was just wow so for you you know speaking of that scene we should it took us four hours to i was in the pool that day for about four hours shooting mm -hmm. all the the, the stunts and then um, with with Susan Danford who plays Trish. So I was in and out the water. Um, some of 
I, I really, I love that scene. Um, another scene that I, that is really close to my heart is the scene where Candace is reading the poem to Trent and we, mm. you know, that's her, that is her poem to him. And that's also, that's her world of Trent in a nutshell. Mm. She's so vulnerable and so exposed. And I just loved how stripped down, you know, the makeup. Well, I mean, Amy Spross and Rousseau, who's our makeup artist on the show, her and I talked at length about really stripping her down. Because every time you see um, Candace at work, her hair is always together. She's got these beautiful red, these well-manicured nails. And we wanted to really strip her down. So that's one of my favorites. And then there's another one coming that I can't tell you about. That's okay. No, that's okay. That's okay. We're, we're watching it tonight at, what time is it tonight? Uh, it's eight, on Thursday, right? It's past eight. I wish the mm. president would push his talk back by an hour. That would be great. <laughs> thanks, thanks, President Ramaphosa. Thank you. <laughs> thanks uh, so, so real much. <laughs> I'm sending the memo. <laughs> real Blank Guru is asking, uh, what advice can you give to up-and-coming uh, actors and actresses on the kind of roles you play? The, okay. I'll take it from the kind of roles one can play. You know, advice one I always can give play, to, yeah, yeah. The advice I give to upcoming actors is always, firstly, it's always a question, and it is, mm. why do you want to be an actor? Mm. And if the answer is to be famous, then I can't answer the question because... If you want to be an actor, if you want, I mean, if your call is to portray another person, if your call is to write, if your call is to paint, it is something so far beyond you. You cannot come at it from a place of ego. If it is something that you literally wake up every day and before you breathe, good morning, mm -hmm. it is, I want this as much as I want air in my lungs, then I can say to you, okay. I always advise study, whether you mm -hmm. get yourself into a workshop program or you get yourself a diploma, or if you go to AFTA or VITS or Rhodes or UCT, if you can find the money to go and learn about the craft, to go and um, really, really cut your teeth um, in the world of the performing arts and you get to explore yourself in them and you get to explore dynamics with people. If you're interested in people, we are big observers of people as actors. We watch people constantly. I know I do. I'm constantly trying to understand why someone did that or why did they flick their hair that way? Or, you know, there's, there's, there's so much in body language that we don't even, we never even get to hear in, in communication. So if that, if that is your calling, study and watch everything. Watch mm -hmm. everything. You must, even if it's bad, if it's terrible, you can switch it off. But learn from the greats. There are incredible masters out there in, 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 in terms of our, the international actors, even local actors. Um, go and watch theatre. Get inside. Get inside yourself. Yeah. And, 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 you know, part of being an actor is you have to have quite an immense capacity to sublimate. So ah. you'll be... And I know, and I used to do this as a teenager and I, I didn't understand why it was happening. And I know now I remember, you know, some boy would break my heart or I'd have a terrible fight with my father and I'd just be devastated and gutted and crying. And I would, in those moments, I'd go, stop. Mm. Remember what this looks like. Remember what this feels like. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and it was just the weirdest, like, cognizant shift. And then that mm -hmm. would only happen for a few minutes and not course you back inside the emotion but actors you know I did one of my final um drama uh, uh pracs one day mm. after my grandfather died and mm. I didn't know I was like how, how am I going to do this I've just lost mm. my best friend sorry I, I mustn't actually talk about him um I've just lost my best friend how am I going to do how am I how am I going to perform today and you just zip it up and you just use it. And mm. yeah, that our, as actors, we are the tool. Our emotions, our mm. feelings, our experiences of the world, mm. this is the tool. So take care of this. Take care of your voice. Take care of your body. Um, 
you know, drink lots of water, take care of your skin. If you're going to be on screen, you know, it's um, everything shows. It's, you know, we're working in an HD world now. We're not working on film where there's beautiful soft filters. So, you know, you also try not be overly critical. Try and get away from ego and vanity. Otherwise, it'll just destroy you. And, um, yeah, that if that really is your calling, then do the work. Do the work. Um, don't don't come, you know, if you want to be famous, there are a hundred other ways. You could be an Instagram star or a YouTube star. You can be funny, you can be whatever. But as an actor, yeah, it's not about fame. It's about mm. if I don't do this, I might die. That's how it feels. Mm. So, yeah. If you feel like that, guys, then, then yeah, go and go. St- I mean, I wish, I wish that we'd have um, more uh, workshop workshops available that that mm. could really sustain people who don't really have the money to do it um mm. hope i mean we're now living on in such an online time that may actually yes. come by way of things mm. but date is really expensive so yeah if you can't you know if you can't go to school and if you can't study watch everything watch everything mm. just and, mm. and 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 know yourself mm. know yourself Mm. So everyone is sending, a couple of people are sending you a, a virtual hug. They're saying oh. brilliant, uh, br- brilliant answer there. Um, and in terms of the ego, um, Shannon, how do you keep yours in check? I mean, you have a, 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 an amazing resume of, of, of various uh, things you've done as an actress and exceptionally well. How do you keep your ego in check? Well, if you meet my mother and father, that answer you it'll be a very quick answer because never in my entire life have they ever allowed me to gloat um i have never been overly um you know applauded for anything it has always come mm. with that okay well done now go do the dishes so mm. or go do your homework so and mm. and also my family background there's there's none of that either it's like uh, you you know you're still whatever you know there's no that that hasn't really been allowed to be a part of who I am mm-hmm. um, I think living in Los Angeles for six years is definitely where my my biggest battle with ego took place, and it was grueling destructive amazing mm-hmm. scary time and It was, I always say it was the best, worst thing I ever did because it humbled me out completely that I I almost didn't even know who I was and I had to reinvent myself because Mm. I thought, oh, my gosh, I'm this huge failure. Um, So, and because that experience is so very close to the surface in me and always Mm. will be, it's Mm. just indelible, Mm. there's always that constant reminder, like, you are... Mm. You are, I don't know, that, there's that saying, you know, you're only as good as the last role you played, which I'm not, yes. I, I'm not, I don't really prescribe to that, but I don't think it serves you mm. to think I'm the best because mm. you're never going to learn and every, every moment is a growth moment and every moment is a teaching moment. So be open to it. The ego, the only, the ego's only intention is to actually get in your way, your soul's way. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. and rid yourself of that and I think some people struggle more than others um, I'm not saying I don't struggle there are times when I really have to sit with myself and like you know give myself a stern yeah. talk mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but luckily, I have really incredible people in my life that can level me out and that mm-hmm. can be honest enough with me and and you have to be open enough to also hear it. Like being defensive doesn't really serve you. You know, just just listen. There's you know, just mm-hmm. listen. Take it in. Uh, Voyo is asking: Are you worried about being typecast with uh, the lawyer role? Are you worried well, about that? No. So many of the characters I have played have been lawyers, but that's only their occupation. And for mm-hmm. some, I don't know what, but for some reason, it's just you know they. They see, it's like, okay, well, let's make her a lawyer or let's make her a doctor. So uh, for me, I don't really worry about that, but I worry more about being t- cast as only the strong, you know, go-getter. Mm, 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 worries. Mm, mm. That's why 
playing Candice was such a, a breath of fresh air for me because I, I got to show people that there's a lot more to than more to me and to my skill than just, you know, getting up there and being bold and brave and brazen that, that there's, mm. the, well, the well is deeper and uh, yeah. So no, not the lawyer part, but definitely being typecast is strong. Uh, and um, there's a question here. I just, I just need to check who asked it. Um, yes, it's I am Beth underscore 1103. Can you please give us your skincare routine? Man, you don't age. So um, I never, ever, 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 ever go to bed without washing my face, ever. Um, I drink a lot of water. I eat really well. I don't use particularly expensive products. In fact, uh, I'm a huge fan of Eucerin. I think Eucerin is great. It's over the counter at Clix. I also use cannabis cream on my face as a moisturizer. And I have a, um, just for the, some of the pigmentation I have, I have just a, a, a product. Can't even, I don't even really know the name. It's, it's not very expensive. Um, mm -hmm. But I use that. I've used, I, and my mom actually, my mom is, it's, I, I thank my mother because from the age of 10, I remember she took me into Woolies. She was like, we're going to get you your first for moisturizer and your proper cleanser mm. and a proper toner. So I've been doing that yeah. for, for so, so very long and, mm. uh, and always wear sunscreen. I, you will never see, if I go out during the day, I have my cap on, I have my glasses on, I have my factor 50 on. I don't like to put my face in the sun at all. So mm. yeah. And just, and you, and you know what, use, use, you know your skin if you've got very if you've got overly oily skin there's certain products that you want to stay away from so, mm -hmm. so um, be conscientious but you don't have to buy products that cost an arm and a leg you really don't um, I, mm -hmm. I, I, I love Eucerin also really love Nivea mm -hmm. um, I think they make great products so uh, Rene Loy is asking I mean a question you answer, answered already she's saying would you consider being a lawyer I think she just joined us, and I can answer that. Uh, Shannon says no, she's not going to be a lawyer anytime soon. She doesn't want to study being a lawyer. But you said if the show, uh, Sandra Stein, were to come up, she's ready. I'm ready, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so when, when you came back uh, from living in, in L.A., you mm -hmm. said that you felt that Hollywood is overrated. Why is that? Why do you feel that way? Because I don't think, I don't think the best films in the world necessarily come out of Hollywood. I think Hollywood is an incredible business model. And I think, mm. look, for the most part, it's a really successful industry. But you look at you look at the UK and you look at European cinema, they make incredible but we're also, but we're also talking about um, art films, nouveau films. Mm. When mm. you look at how to make a really great blockbuster. Hollywood's got that down. They've got so much of it. They've got it down. But it comes at such a price, that level of fame. You know, I just want to act. I don't care where I am. I just want to be able mm. to, if I, can, if I can be in, the, in a voice studio in the morning and I can go through to a theater rehearsal during the day and have a, you know, have a, a film shoot that night, I'm happy. I just, mm. I just think, I just want our industry to we don't have to we don't have to emulate Hollywood mm. we can be our own and there have been mm. some really successful films that have done that but we're constantly comparing them to Hollywood and I think the minute we can stop that comparison comparison comparisons are the worst mm. Mm. they're not healthy I mean, you can, yes, you can learn from something. You can learn from, mm -hmm. from the successes and you can learn from the failures. But it's time that we look at our industry separately from Hollywood. Because mm -hmm. they do what they do and they do it really well. And we've got to mm -hmm. do what we do and excel. Mm -hmm. I, just, I, just I, um, I just think it's just a weird, it's just a weird obsession. And I don't know if it'll ever end. And I understand why. I understand, you know. As, as actors in our craft or directors or writers, like if you in Hollywood, then you've made it. So what? Until yeah. that time, you're not a success. It's just weird mm. that we measure our success by going to Hollywood. I think you've got to measure your success by one thing, and that's am I happy? Uh, uh -huh. Is my life full? 
is do I have mm. people that I love and that love me? If you mm. have that, you are successful. Mm. Mm-hmm. And, and and again, I get that was and look, I mean, when I went to LA, oof, was I hard on myself? I was. It was and it, it didn't even, it didn't do me any favors. And I was mm. going into amazing rooms. I had an incredible manager. I was meeting with agents all the time, and I was going on these huge auditions for like Iron Man two, and I mean. Like, you know really incredible things i was getting to brilliant rooms meeting incredible casting directors incredible casting agents and at no not one stage did i ever feel happy about it i just felt like i was selling mm-hmm. myself and we are you know we are commodities mm-hmm. but i just was like wow is, is that all that i am i'm just this thing that like i put myself mm-hmm. in front of you and you either buy me or you don't it just started to feel uh-huh. so mm-hmm. empty and mm-hmm. i just i was like wow if this too much lack here where's mm-hmm. love where's mm-hmm. you know um, if my if i have a really fantastic career if i'm sitting alone in my bed at night my career's not going to hug me and hold me and console me and comfort me back mm-hmm. you know so, mm-hmm. but that's my journey and 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 i am like for anyone else i'm like go for it if it's something you feel you must do do it like don't regret mm-hmm. not going um it's just You know, sometimes you you change, your dreams change, and my dream of being a Hollywood actress it had turned out becoming a total nightmare for me. I was haunted mm. by, it. I was tormenting myself because I believed if I didn't do it, I was just a failure. And mm. that's not. You measure your success by your own yardstick, and I say, you know what? It's all about this, and it's about the people, and um, yeah, and and if you want to tell stories, you can tell them from anywhere. You can. Mm. That's true. Yeah. That's true, and 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 I think I agree with you. I mean, the story is the 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 movie that won the best Oscar is a foreign film by um, what's his name, Yong. Um, I've got his name, the 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 director. Wait, sorry, which film? I forgot the name that won like the best uh, film Parasite. at the Oscars. Parasite. Yes, yes. So some of, some of these films are also stories that are not about Hollywood. Uh, Brina. Uh, Womerens is asking what does Shannon think South African acting has to offer that's different from Hollywood. You know what I don't think that it's that we have anything different to offer. I just think we have the same level of talent as anyone. Um mm. I, I I wish that actors were paid like Hollywood actors because then mm. you wouldn't have the stress between jobs. You really wouldn't. We wouldn't be hustling. It wouldn't be considered Oh, so you're an actress part time? What do you do? Like, what's your hustle? How else do you make money? Mm, mm. Um, but you know what I think? I, I think as South Africans, mm. as South African actors, not celebrities, actors, because there's a difference. Mm-hmm. We really work hard. Mm. We, we work really hard, and we're like just game. Just like give it to me. You know, and 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 that's a mark. I mean, look, we don't get paid particularly well. We really don't. But you put a bunch of actors in a room. It doesn't matter what we're doing. The passion that ignites us. I mean, we love what we do. So maybe I'm not saying that Hollywood actors don't love what they do, but we really love what we do. For if you're coming down to like a remuneration paycheck at the end of the day, we love it. We are all heart. I think yeah, we're heart. I think that's that might separate us. I don't know, Brina. Mm. That's my cousin, by the way. I hope that answered your uh, question. <laughs> so, so in terms of show, the shows that you watch, so I'm just going to ask you top three things. So, the top three shows that you're currently watching that are not the shows that you're in. <clears throat> so, local or international? Do you mean? Anything. Whichever, whichever shows. Okay. Yeah. I've just started watching The Stranger on Netflix. Oh my word! Oh yeah, so, it's I'm so. I'm on the first episode. What's that? I'm on you the watch- first episode of The Stranger. Yeah, I'm probably the first ten minutes. I started watching last night and I couldn't stop. Well, I've been passed out. I knocked out five episodes last night. I couldn't stop. Um, so I'm really loving that. Uh, I loved. Uh, it's another British show called Marcella, mm-hmm. which is also just fantastic. And Anna Friel is just mm, brilliant. And then something else that I watched the other day, 
it's sorry it's actually it's it's, it's actually a reality it's a docu series is cheer which was just spectacular to to wow. to these these so, so what, young athletes wow 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 uh i'm just looking through questions here uh, i've got a question for you um it's about someone was asking about streaming services oh yes um push pop 80, 80 86 is asking what's your opinion on film transitioning from cinema to platforms like netflix oh well look i mean i think i think it's really great i think home entertainment is really it is it's proving to be the way forward but really nothing beats going to watch a film that you've anticipated for months in the cinema with your popcorn you know and whatever, you, whatever it is that you're sipping on if it's a diet coke or whatever it is and you've got uh-huh. your smarties there's something there is something about the lights coming down in that cinema and that ba ba da 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 it you just it's like transformative it's like being uh-huh. in church or shul or mosque or something it feels really good. Uh-huh. I think it's great but I I don't know I think now in the time of covid and things I don't know that cinemas are going to really fly <laughs> any longer people are going to be like I don't want to go there I'm just going to stay home <laughs> or people are going to go there with 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 all we're going to see sanitizers everyone's going to have sanitizers and and yeah <laughs> But also so this is my my little munchkins joined us for the interview. Uh, um I think I think look I think cinemas are going to take a huge knock. Um mm. But you know there's something as well when you're sitting in a room full of strangers and you're watching something you come to you are you are bonded by something. Yes, that's true actually. Like yes. You're all out of there and you you've experienced it together and it it really especially works if it's like a horror film. Uh, I remember mm. going to paranormal activity um uh-huh. and a friend of mine and we walked out of the cinema and we had to take the elevator up to the parking lot and there were a few of us that got into the elevator from the movie and you uh-huh. could see we were all pale we just were all traumatized <laughs> and I remember we stepped in and we pushed the button and everyone was quiet and I started to get this nervous giggle and I was like oh my god I think I have low blood pressure and everyone just started <laughs> laughing because we all kind of felt the same way so uh, don't uh, lose that but um i don't know i, I think we'll, we'll just have to see we'll have to see how it goes uh and tm tabisi is asking ask shannon gomora or the queen i don't know what that means what does it mean what like or like do i prefer which like do i prefer being on it Yes, do you prefer being on Gomorrah or the Queen? But you're the same character so. Well, yeah. yeah so I know what 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 is interesting is that yes, I go in as the same character, but I go in and I meet different people every time. And I've also established mm. the relation um the the family on the Queen because I've been going back as Sandra for the last 3 years. So it's always so mm-hmm. wonderful to go in and see everybody again. It's like a wonderful reunion. Um I enjoy I enjoy all of the experiences. I can't say one is why I prefer one to the other. I don't. It's a totally different energy, totally different environment, mm-hmm. totally different people and set and it's I just love doing my job. So I'm happy to be mm-hmm. with you. So mm-hmm. yeah, no favorite. Sorry. <laughs> so your your top 3 holiday destinations? My my top 3 holiday destinations. Your top oh. yeah. Um okay so one of my favorite places to go in the Eastern Cape is Bushman's River. Mm. And then I am like desperate to go to Italy and to uh-huh. Greece. Uh-huh. And I was actually going to Greece on my honeymoon this June but we've unfortunately had to cancel everything. So yeah because that- of, uh happen next year or the next or whenever it is safe to travel once again <laughs> um so top your yes uh question here from a reader top 3 fragrances what are your which are your top 3 fragrances 
Who asked that question? Is that someone who knows me? Because if you know me, you know that I have a total perfume obsession and I could never answer that question ever. <laughs> there was a stage when I had over 50 fragrances. Okay. Five. Did you use? Some girls, how like, many did you use some girls like bags. I like perfume. <laughs> and I used to, and I would wear them to mood or season. Uh and in terms of uh, restaurants, what did you, what top three restaurants? I mean, obviously before COVID, I mean, sure. or maybe well, after as well, well. Right now, I can tell you that I'm so desperate for sushi. So I am missing my local hangout, Rejoice, in uh -huh. Bryant Park. Uh -huh. It's one of my favorite places. It's not particularly um, fancy in any way, but they make the most amazing sushi. Um, I really love Momo. Nico in Boston, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. fantastic Asian food. And I love, uh, I'm really bad at favorites. If you haven't noticed, I'm like shocking. I, I have, I have, I have, I have. Um, I really love, like love a good fillet steak. So, um, yeah, I'm kind of missing the turn and tender a little. Um, uh, oh, yeah. Oh, I love turn and tender. Oh, well. One of my favorite Indian restaurants is Delhi Daba in Park Mall. Um, so, Steve just joined us. He says he loves you. What a superstar. Hi, oh, Steve. Steve. How are you, how are you doing? You. I love him. Um, and what did you say? Uh, a word or a phrase you overuse? A word or a phrase I overuse. Mm. Um, I have like a couple of like anecdotal things which I throw around like act and don't if you act in haste you'll repent in leisure mm -hmm. um, oh that's a better question for like friends you'd have to ask them I don't know mm. I'll have to think on that okay and uh Velia is asking, what is the first thing you're going to do when lockdown gets lifted? I'm going to walk my dogs. And then I'm going to go eat sushi. <laughs> <laughs> um, and three things you, you never leave your house without. Um, they're sitting, it's actually funny, um, moisturizer, lip ice. Uh-huh. Ah, uh, okay. And what's your dream for yourself, I think, going forward as we wrap, uh, wrap up? I mean, if there are any questions you still want to ask, we've got like maybe two more minutes, three more minutes to go. You guys can send through questions. We're still here. So what do I want for myself? To be mm. happy. Mm. To be happy and employed. And uh, I just want to tell stories. It's pretty mm. simple. And... Are any roles do you, in particular that you'd want to play? Like, is there that dream role of yours? Like, you know, you want to play either... Anything. Uh, as long as the character grips me, I don't care what she is. Mm. And as long as she challenges me. And if you had to do this journey all over again, what would you change? The journey of being an entertainment, being an actress and a writer, what would you change? Nothing, because then I wouldn't be where I am. You change one thing, the knock-on effect is, I wouldn't change a thing. Everything I am, everything that is happening is all due to every decision, and every choice I've made throughout my life. And I would hate to change that because I love where I am and I'm very blessed and I'm very appreciative and grateful for the life that I have. So no, no changes here. Cool, cool. Shannon, thank you so much for your time. I mean, I am so obsessed with Candice. I literally okay. almost say Candice. You see, so everyone is on Sandra. Uh, <laughs> I'm on Candice. I appreciate I'm, you. I'm like, you I really do. You're going to watch oh, tonight, wow. right? Candice. No, definitely, definitely. Like 2010, um, Vele is saying, um, are you ready for our date? Uh, 2010 tonight. Yes, 8 yes, 10, we are definitely ready. watching. I'm ready, honey. I'm making the popcorn. Let's go. It's go time. Yes. And oh, Tiffany is here. Tiffany um, Bard is here. She's saying, girl, I was born ready. Yes, she Tiffany was. Tiffany plays Jess in the show. 
And yes. uh, she and her husband created the show, correct? That is exactly right. The very brilliant, talented uh, Barbara Zano. <laughs> it's, it's, it's an amazing show. So you've watched the show, right? I watch it. Um, I watch every episode three times. So, what of the episodes that that have aired? The in scenes where you're not in, or a storyline where you're not in. What what storyline are you most like grips you the most? Like you really like you are so focused on it, or are so invested in it? Um, T boss, actually, I, I'm so interested mm. in, in the in the identity crisis because I think mm-hmm. I think it's something that we face at various stages of our lives. Like things will be going mm-hmm. wonderfully, mm-hmm. Like, and something happens and it shakes you to your core and you look at yourself and you go, I don't know who I am. I don't know what I want. I don't know. And that, that, see, I like any kind of existential conflict. Mm-hmm. So I find mm-hmm. it really compelling. And, um, and also, and also I'm really enjoying Lucille's, Lucille's journey. And, but again, that's about her, her and her identity. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. You, you know what I, what, what I enjoyed in the final episode uh, with um, Jess and Danny, when they had that argument and then he, he pushed it. I mean, that was so, I can't no, wait to watch. It, was, it, was, so it, wasn't, it wasn't intended, but she knew it was probably going to happen. Like, it's wow. Yeah. Look, and that's also, and that, that really, that speaks to, that really speaks to um, Tiffany and Johnny's talent as storytellers because mm-hmm. it's not black or white. It's such a gray mm-hmm. area. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. the way that they handle it. I think in tonight's episode, I don't want to give anything away, mm-hmm. but it speaks to so many relationships. It really mm-hmm. does. Things mm-hmm. can get ugly in the heat of a moment. You can mm-hmm. be the most wonderful, compassionate, kind person, and in a moment of mm-hmm. absolute frustration, mm-hmm. you can make a mm-hmm. mistake with the people you love. Um, so it's. I think it's a. Mm-hmm. I think it's a wonderful story that they're telling for. Mm-hmm any audience to watch because yeah. I know that people will relate to it. Mm-hmm. And, Absolutely. Yeah, it's gray areas. They're so they're always the most interesting to explore. Because you'll always have someone who's like, no, he shouldn't have done that. And then you'll have someone who'll say, no, but it wasn't his fault. And it creates amazing conversation and it becomes a teaching moment. It becomes a moment mm-hmm. where we can o- all open up our minds and our hearts. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And my last question, uh Arthur Arthur, let me see. Arthur underscore uh, Kangati says, what can we expect from Shannon in the next few months slash years? I wish I had a crystal ball to tell you. I don't know. I, I honestly, like, so, there's so much uncertainty because of, of COVID. Um, mm. But I'm hoping that once, you know, in the next, in the coming months, when things start, um, start loosening up, um, I'm hoping that I can uh, get my my horror into production. Um, I'd like to actually, I'd like to direct it. So, mm-hmm. well, I'd like to co-direct it. Um, so, yeah, I, I want to kind of get a little bit more behind the camera as well, because mm-hmm. I, I don't. For me, being in front of the camera, I love it, but I just want to tell stories. So whether that's in front or behind, I, I'm, I'm happy with either. So yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe some more directing, a lot more writing, um, getting and getting my content um, out there. Hopefully, mm-hmm. cool, cool. Fingers crossed for you, uh, thank Shannon. You. Thank you so much for your time and everyone. Thank you for having so much. me for the last hour. Bro. It's been wonderful. Thank you. This was so cool. This was so cool. Thank you. And uh, see you virtually. We're all going to be wherever we are watching 2010 on Mnet tonight. Nice. See you all there. Yay. And 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 and, and Brenda just 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 said that the president's address is at at seven. Good. So then you better be you because we got some work to do, yo. <laughs> cool, cool, Shannon. <laughs> Stay safe. Stay, stay safe. And stay safe. Be well. God bless. And uh, yeah, see you on the other side. Cool, cool. Thank you. And for everyone who joined, thank you for joining us. Thank the you interview guys. stays for the next twenty-four hours. The interview is still going to be on uh, our our Instagram. Sorry, I was about to say YouTube. I don't know why. It's going to be on our Instagram live for the next twenty-four hours. Thank you. Thank Bye-bye. you. Bye bye.